uh, Pack. <laughs> good girl. We are here with the Ask the Pack Leader Show. That was I'm... a really good intro. <laughs> <laughs> so look, perfect example. Hey, I got you excited. I know. Relax. So I have to give her calm energy here to relax. You're all right, pretty. So this is Betsy, by the way, who's here for the Ask the Pack Leader Show. I wanted to start with her today. We have obviously Jamie here. We have Adam obviously. here. And Christian behind the scenes. His intros for you are the best, by yeah. the way. Every episode gets better and better. Unfortunately, of Jamie. Obviously, you can see her. She's right there. Uh, Christian's in the background. And we got my girl Betsy here. So Betsy is a, I think, like four and a half month old um, chocolate lab pup who was here for our puppy enrichment program. She came in like a little wild girl for sure. Mm -hmm. Fired up. As you can see, she's very prone to get excited quickly. Um, but I wanted to just bring her on. We could put her on here, actually. We could see how she does on here. Because she's, uh, she's, believe it or not, out of all the dogs that we brought on so far, the pups, in my opinion, she's probably the most confident out of all of them. And she's a Labrador, right? So we had a bulldog on here. We had the shepherd mix on here. Who else? That was the only two? That, we put that on? was it so yeah. far. Yeah. Georgie and, yeah. Yeah, Georgie. So then we have her now. And she's a pretty confident girl. So she goes right up to the dogs. And she can definitely handle herself. This is actually, I saw, uh, here, let's put her on here. Come on, let's go on the table. So look, I'll show you how to go, how to put her dog on the table. So look, I'm gonna hold her from here and let her feel like she's pulling herself up. Yes. Yeah. She's a big girl look at already. That, look, look, this is the this is what I. She's like a bulldozer lab. I call these mm -hmm. ones. Like, just look, look. I'm gonna eat that. Shh. Easy girl. Knock it down. <laughs> Ruin the set. This is more bulldog than Georgie was, by the way. Yeah. These labs, like, and this is like with these English, like, big block, uh, block-headed labs kind of thing. They are like, they're like a, like a bull in a china shop. <laughs> My favorite kind. Yeah, this is Jamie's favorite. There he the goes. Labrador. She so finally, she finally got feel? her wish. How's this making you feel? How's it making me feel? Yeah. yeah. I want to pet her and snuggle her. I'm just yeah. kidding. I always ask this stuff. You do. Can yeah. they see me over this? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Like I always, I love asking, <laughs> I love asking like uh, people how they're feeling about it, especially like because like listen, my clients, I have eighty percent of my clients are female, so mm -hmm. I love asking Jamie and Cassie and the other staff here, like, so how does it feel when you see this puppy right now? Like, what does it make you feel like? Because for me, my, I, I from doing this for so long, of course, like I enjoy just holding her for sure. I really like that stuff, <laughs> but. That's me and my feminine, but but I'm very easily able to go back to my masculine and be like, what does my girl need here? How can I help her? How can I make sure she's a, like a well-raised dog and give her rules, boundaries, limitations and make sure she feels good and fulfills her needs and all that good stuff. So here. Steve asked you, he asked you, but then you made a joke about it. Yeah. So how do you actually feel, if you can say? Oh, it looks great. That's my girl. I would say when I first started here, yeah, I would have been like, oh my God, she's so cute. See? Look at that shit. Yep. So what a telltale sign, right? That people, that tells me by the way, owners, you guys are still doing some of that stuff. So we got to make sure we watch <laughs> that. That's my girl. Look, so this state of mind, good girl. Can you see her in there? Yeah. Good. That's my girl. So this is what I pet, right? Most people are petting what the excitement, the thing that Jamie just did. Mm -hmm. You saw what that means to them. And then they do that repeatedly over and over and over with the puppy and told the dogs like this old, four and a half months. And then I'm getting messages saying, Look at that, beautiful, good girl. And they're saying to me, so uh, when can I, when do I, when should I start training the puppy? And I'm like, how long have you had her? Two and a half months, okay, you've been training her. Likely to be excited, to invade your space, to be disrespectful, to eat food really fast, to rush through doorways, to pull on leash. You've already been training her for two and a half months, so thank God you're sending me a message now, because we're still an imprint and we can do something about it. But most people are doing that, like in the beginning, and, Remember how she came in? I mean, she was a wild girl when she came in. And she, she was. was like, what, three months, three and a half months or whatever? Mm -hmm. This is now she comes for boarding and uh, like a bunch, which is awesome. We love having her back because she's such a good girl. She knows treadmill. She knows, I mean, she just girl knows everything already. And she's four and a half months old. Mm -hmm. She's like, we try to make the, uh, the pups who come here just like Nico, where we just expose them to literally as much as we possibly can and teach them as much as we possibly can. Christian and I were doing videos yesterday. With, with Betsy? Her. Yeah, with Betsy. Yeah. She's great. You know what's funny about the name Betsy, right? I don't want to throw my friend under the bus and my family, but... <laughs> I remember my neighbor growing up, uh, it was a, like a close family friend and the two houses over, they got a Labrador Retriever puppy named, and then we didn't know shit about dogs back then, right? We were just like, oh, it's a puppy, just play with it and all that. And the puppy was a yellow lab and her name was Betsy. Oh, really? Yeah, but the story doesn't end very well, which is, 
she was like very mouthy and like light, just like her when she mm -hmm. came in. And they ended up getting rid of her because they're like, we can't control her. She's like out of control. She's really? eating everything. She's destroying the house, this and that. So they ended up rehoming her to, some, to another family who could deal with it. How old was she when they got rid of her? <sighs> I couldn't even remember. Probably like, like, Young? like yeah. Like they only had her like a month or something like oh, that. Oh, that's it? Yeah. And you she didn't, like didn't want to take well. her? I didn't know. She, I was like, I was like nine, ten years old. Uh, of course, I wanted her. I probably would have was, was begging my parents. You wanted all the dogs. Yeah, exactly. I, that's a, it's funny. Like growing up, I always like people ask me, "How'd you know about the dog thing?" It's like I would go to my friends' houses and I'd be like, "Oh, you have a dog? Like that's cool. Like you go do that. Um, I'm gonna go play with that dog for a while." I had no yeah. idea what I was doing, but I just enjoyed being around them. But it made sense because it's a conscious animal, and obviously, this now I get to do this for a living, which is pretty awesome. But. This is Betsy, and this is what you want. With the four, I mean, look, we just brought her on here. This is what I'm saying, her confidence of her. Look at the way mm -hmm. she's passed out on here. So she came on, smelled everything, moved all of our shit around for a second, <laughs> of course. And then from there, she was like, okay, I'm going to just pass out and sleep, which is awesome. And then this is the state of the girl. And look at, by the way, how I'm, look at that. It enhances mm -hmm. the calmness. So most people do this petting. Good girl, good girl, good girl. With the excited energy. So you just switch. But when I do this energy, yeah, it's a good girl. Do you have what? a picture of her on your phone from like the, the pictures that we took of her? Let me see. Because I feel like her coat got darker. And it's shiny. She's got a really nice coat right now. It's really good. Do you think she got darker? <coughs> or she looks the same to you? Maybe a little darker. She's an awesome girl. And I'm glad because this is the, this is a very common dog that people get as America's family dog. Like this, this yeah. one and the doodles and the goldens and all that. They get the golden retrievers. They get this dog thinking like, oh, I'm getting that breed, so it's just going to be easy. But this is this energy can go wrong really fast, really fast. Shh. Oh, I thought she was eating her leash. You need chills? You're just itching yourself. Huh? Can you see it? If you hold it a little bit more to your right. Yeah, it's better. Yeah, she looks oh, like yeah. a little bit lighter there. Little a little bit. bit. It was, I mean, she's also in the sunlight here, but. Yeah. Though, yeah, too, everybody thinks that the Labradors are easy. That's why they get them. Nah, and they and feel like they don't have to really put much work in. Like, look at, my, look at my, look at the people next door who did that. You right. know what I mean? They thought it was like a Labrador. Was, we get a Labrador. It's going to be the easiest thing ever. And it's right. like, what's wrong with this dog? Nothing wrong with it. The energy is different for every freaking Labrador. Every Shepherd, every Pitbull, every Rottweiler, every Yorkie, whatever it is. Every Doodle. I mean, we had the mm -hmm. Doodle who came here last week with aggression. We get a lot of Doodles, by the way, with aggression. Yeah, a lot of them with yeah. anxiety and separation anxiety, all that stuff. So it's a heavily overbred breed right now, but a lot of great ones too. Like she's an she's an amazing one. They're all they're all great when they're born. It's just how to human influence and create with them. So this could have been uh, one that went the wrong way. But I love when people are coming early on doing prevention. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm like really pumping this prevention stuff because the results have been amazing. Look at this shit. This is like four and a half months and she's already doing amazing. Whereas they would have likely come to us when she's like nine, ten months old and had already been destroying shit, going crazy nipping and all, all this nonsense, eating socks and mm -hmm. like, you know, the, all the typical stuff these guys do, eat food a million miles per hour. But now we get this instead, which is awesome. Okay, so that's Betsy, girl. Thank you, Betsy. You did very, very <laughs> good. Sorry to bother you on your, <laughs> while you're sleeping on here. Yeah, I know, you're sleepy. You're gonna go to bed now. She's like, I'll just stay yeah, here the whole time. You go to bed, pretty. You go to bed, girl. She also can feel my energy and like the, the talking too. So alert. So I stopped the petting. Did you notice? Right there. Stop petting. Then from the yeah, it's a good girl. Very good. Very good. Excellent. That's Nico alerting to something. Somebody came in from downstairs. All right, that's Betsy girl. I'm gonna take you off. Come here, girl. Yeah. Thank you, Betsy. Yeah, she did so good. I wanted to feel good about coming on the show. You did so good, pretty girl. <laughs> yes. Okay, let me grab you, pretty. So look at how I pick it up too. I'm gonna try to go from under here, nice and slow. Not grab her really fast. And then from here, I just pick it up to here. Right? And support her front legs if I need to. Most people do this with the dog. And it makes them expose their bottom, which is like, makes them feel vulnerable. So I like to keep the dog here. And they're on the same level that they would be when they're being, um, like walking on the ground. Mm -hmm. Yep. So this is really good. Okay. Okay, that's. Watch the camera there. <laughs> She's going to knock everything yeah. over on her way yeah. out. Yep. Okay. Thanks, buddy, for bringing me. She's not very light. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that's, <laughs> a, that's, a, that's a dense dog right there. She's growing fast. Yep. Don't fall down the stairs, Christian. Okay. Um, 
So what else? What else do we have to talk about before we get into the questions? What else is happening? Uh, why don't we talk about your nervousness with needles? Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> so look at this. That was a good one. So yesterday, and by the way, like in the past, I would have been like, don't talk about that shit. It's, I'm, in, I'm insecure about it and all that. We can bring our, our liquids back onto the table. Oh, now. yes. Because Betsy would have, Thank you. as you saw, she would have freaking ripped that shit all over the place. Um, so, yes. Yeah, so I've been like, as always, I'm always trying to optimize myself physically, psychologically, right? So. I went to a doctor recently to get all my hormone levels checked, more of a uh, integrated doctor who's doing like holistic and conventional like medicine, I guess. And I found some of my, my hormones to be off and all that. And also I wanted to get my diet on point and knowing, listen, cause like people will tell you, you should be vegan, you should be carnivore, you should be keto, you should be like, but what, what, what are you sensitive to? What's the individual body? Just like we're right. talking about a dog, we have to know the individual. So, I've tried a bunch of different ones and my weight's good. And it's funny, the guy said to me when I went in there, he's like, he's like, uh, he told the nurse, he goes, I think we have the wrong blood, like blood work <laughs> for this guy. Like the, the, who is this guy like that's there? Because I'm like six one, like or six foot, like 179 pounds right now. I'm like in decent shape. And he's like, saw my stuff and my hormones were a little bit off. My cholesterol was a little high and all that. So it was like, he was like baffled by it, but this is my point. It's so like, I what's feel like you've gotten that before, though. Yeah, I have. I have. So, uh, like, so I we had to figure out what's going on. But then, what they didn't probably notice was that I put my body through the fucking ringer for about a decade prior to <laughs> not that long ago, you know, or 15 years, honestly. Well, that wasn't on your intake form. Huh? <laughs> that yeah. wasn't on your intake. But I told form. them. I said, I, t- I, I listen. I was brutally honest with them. I said, listen, I've. I really like like put my body through through some harsh like times of like a lot of boozing, a lot of like partying, late nights, not mm-hmm. sleeping well, eating like shit, all that kind of stuff. So anyway, uh, the nutritionist there wanted to do, get a, a blood sample so he could see like she's already laughing. <laughs> so she could see uh, so he could see like what I was sensitive to, what foods I was sensitive to, and stuff. So. This thing comes and Jamie's setting it up for me and it's just literally one of those things that you just have to prick your finger. Like it's like a like It's not even a needle. It's, it's just not like a, a needle. It's like tiny. a plastic thing that you push it and when you push it in it's like and it like mm-hmm. gets you, right? So I was like starting to be like fuck, I can't, why can I not do this right now? I'm starting to get all these feelings and stuff, right? And I'm starting to feel like 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 nervous about doing it, anticipating in it. And obviously people feel that way about it cuz it literally gives you a warning like the anticipation's worse than the thing. <laughs> right. And you're seeing the samples of how you should be like the blood should be coming out of your hand and the blood and all. No pressure. Yeah, no pressure. So then I was like, you know, I probably didn't help cuz I'm like just do it. Yeah, yeah. But that but that's you actually should have should have done it for him. Well, yeah. yeah, I did ask if you wanted me to you do know it. Why? I think that would have no. been why cuz you, like, you were saying that you, uh, you were trying to anticipate or you were you didn't want to anticipate or something like that you were anticipating or did or, no know. well yeah i was anticip- i was like i was like when's it gonna i, I want to know when it was gonna prick me like <laughs> like like how much pressure am i to gonna put certain. on the thing that's gonna happen so this, the backstory was that was when i thought about it this is how much in my opinion we've been talking a lot about this internally at back leader dogs is about our childhoods our mm-hmm. parents things that happened throughout our childhood that we just ignore and we say no no, no it's not a big deal like that wasn't anything so something that happened when I was younger going to the pediatrician was I remember a specific experience, but throughout when it was time, like we would go get your checkup, they would test everything, everything's fine. And it's like, okay. And then the big finale was like, <laughs> what, like how many fucking needles are they going to bring in and all this stuff. Right. So it's funny, like, but the, the like actual shots and the needles, I don't care about. Like you mm-hmm. could, you, I'd be like, Hey, give me that shot. No problem. Like I, I wouldn't be able to do it to myself. No issue. But there was one experience when I was younger where they were going to prick my finger and the thing wasn't like working correctly. And I was like, like, And like, were they like, they kept pricking you? They ke- no, no, they weren't pricking me, but they were like pushing it and pushing it and pushing mm-hmm. it. And I was like already like, like, uh, when's this gonna happen? When's it gonna happen? And then it like pricked a little bit and it didn't go all the way through. And like, oh, we have to go get another one and all this thing. And like, it was like it was a, a terrible deal. event. It was when, literally what was kind of happening That's exactly yesterday. Literally what happened what was yesterday. happening. Right? So I'm like literally going through that thing when I was a kid. And then from that point forward, any of those things, like I would like literally freak the fuck out. And as a, as a kid, I was like five years old and the pediatrician would be like, I would be freaking out my parents tell me, right? But needles don't bother you. No, but then they would do the blood, like the normal needle. And I'd be like, oh, thank God. And taking, Some getting your blood taken though. Coming out. Oh, when I get my blood I taken? I can't deal with it. You I see? have no? to lay down. Really? I, I pass out. You so that's look, the other thing that happens. Do you not look at it or is it the needle? I can't, I can't look at the blood coming out of me. Uh, it's not so much the needle. Yeah. Itself, it's just the blood coming out of. Yeah, so I like, and then for, with. for, and then when I had to do it, but prior to this, to, to see all my blood work, I remember the lady had to come. So the lady came like way before this to get my blood oh, yeah. at the house, and she took out like, I mean, she must have taken out this much <laughs> blood did. out of my system. Like she was just like, like I was like, like how many of these vials are you feeling up? I would have been on the floor at that left? point. 
But I'm just like getting that done. I'm like leaning back. I'm like, yeah, so what else? Blah, 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 like having a great time with that. But then some little ass like thing that goes <laughs> on your thing. I'm like, <laughs> I was literally sweating yesterday. I was literally sweating, you know? So anyway, that was the whole thing. So what, but, but here's my point on that is that I'm actually pumped that I, that I figured that out because now it's something that I can explore. Now it's something that I can work mm-hmm. on. I need to go back and deal with that. And I don't know what, what I have to do to deal with it, but I'm definitely gonna explore it. I might talk to Leah who does the hypnotherapy with us and say yeah. like, hey, this is something I wanna go back and talk about. And we wanna do that, right? We're gonna have her come on one of these shows. The, yeah, the, I think that would be yeah. good. Yeah, so Leah comes and she's a good friend and she came and does some hypnotherapy sessions for us. And it's like- I mean, a, this is just an idea. She is coming today. We can she have is. her come on for 15 minutes at the end or something. Maybe. Yeah. If we'll she see. shows up if on time. She's prepared we didn't really she's prepare, prepare her. Yeah, but. we didn't prepare yeah. her. But that's how, kind of how we do yeah. things here. Yeah, we're just. No, she's good. But what I love about, basically, you got, look up hypnotherapy and it's like, it's not like you're sitting there like just sobbing about your problems all day long. And like, that's what in my opinion some therapy is like, is like, let's just continue to talk about the problems that are happening now and then talk, and then talk about like coping with those problems. So it's like almost like a dog, like what the dog training world is doing which is like the dog does all these things and reacts like crazy. So let's just distract them with food. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, why can't we go to the source and overcome that shit? So in my opinion, that's what the hypno does is like it is that you, you kind of relax and sit back and it brings you back to like your childhood almost. And mm-hmm. like you get to re-experience those things and like almost change the events in your mind or let it go out of your subconscious because our, our subconscious is 95% of what we do. So we think about like, yeah, like I have control of everything. You don't have control of shit really. It's like 5% of your brain is conscious. 95% is, is going through. So that's something I'm going to definitely talk to her about in the future. And I do that. I, I offer it to the team. I pay for it for everybody to have it. And I think it's just something that I want to offer as like a perk to working here because I know that people overcoming all that crap from childhood. And there's a lot of other things I want to talk about in the future about parents and forgiveness and all these things that we've been doing. And we just had one of our staff come today. Like, and she told us about how like she had a ton of revelations about her childhood and she feels like a lot more free now. It's a, I really think that, look, we talk about puppyhood, imprint period, how important it is for, for dogs, but we kind of like for human beings, which is a way more intelligent creature that is past, present, and future, not a dog who's just present, and we act like, nah, it's not a big deal that it happened to my child. Eh, who cares? It wasn't that big of a deal. But that's our ego. That's our fight flight. That's our safe. That's our comfort mm-hmm. protecting us from going back and dealing with that danger yet again. But in reality, by not dealing with that danger from the past, that shit stays inside of you. That, in my opinion, forms disease that comes into the anxiety, the anger, the depression. In my opinion, it goes to anger first and then to all the other things. And that's where it comes like, and look at this world. It's filled with a lot of freaking anger right now. I was one. And that's the reason I don't talk that much shit because I was an angry motherfucker back in the day. <laughs> like really, really angry, like super angry about things. What's interesting is I, I never really thought that I had anger. Yeah, I really I didn't. I feel like I was like a pretty cool, easygoing guy. And then I was like, wait a minute, I get frustrated actually. Yeah, why, I think why, that's why that? a lot of people. That is a lot of people. Yeah. But once I started admitting it, it was like, oh, okay, I can start working on that. That's because that, look, that's a self-awareness. That's like the, well, that's, a, that's number one. I cannot help any single client who's in denial. And we have them, they come. And I'm like, and that's what I'm actually trying to figure out the ways that we don't bring those people to work with them in the future because mm-hmm. we have clients and who in the past, and not really not so much at all anymore, but there are some that slip through the cracks where I'm in my mind being <laughs> like, I don't know if like this is going to work because these people are like dog, 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 and they don't want to hear anything. And they're mm-hmm. kind of just like in denial about any that they have anything to do with it. And it's all the dogs thing. And, you know, I, I, I still want, but I, but I get sometimes, this is when I go to emotional world. Instinctually, I see that, but then emotionally I look at the dog and I'm like, fuck, I want to help this dog because I see like a lot of myself of the instability in that dog. I want to help them, but it doesn't always work out the way we want to. And it's unfortunate, but that's what we're going to be working on. Um, what else? What else? What else? So that what was it. Oh, it's December 1st. Yeah. So we did a sober so, November. Yeah. A bunch of us in the company did a sober November just to do it. Like we were like, 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 as you guys know, I used to talk about how much I used to booze and I like really hardly ever drink anymore. Mm-hmm. If it's like, we're going out to dinner, maybe I have a glass of wine or stuff like that. But going out to when the hell do we go out to dinner? Like mm-hmm. I couldn't tell you the last glass of wine I had like in a really long time or a drink even. Um, but yeah, we wanted to do uh, uh, just as a challenge to ourselves. And you did it right. You and Adam also did it. Yep. We had a couple other of the staff who did it. Uh, Christian did it also. And just as a way to challenge ourselves and just say like, cause you know, people will say like, no, 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 I don't have a problem with drinking. Nah, I don't have a problem with weed. Nah, I don't have a problem with cocaine. I don't have a problem with that. And but it's what like, do you consider a problem? No, no you yeah, say to them, or, and you, you know? say to them, yeah. they go, yeah, what do you consider a problem, number one? And it's like, not that our, our, any of our staff is doing cocaine, by the no. way, I'm just saying, like, whatever the drugs <laughs> well, are. Well, no, yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's like, actually. No, um, 
But it's like, yeah, do, if they, how do you know? You, you'll say to the person like, well, why, can you stop? Could you stop? Yeah, I could stop. I can stop whenever I want. I can mm-hmm. stop. Well, how do you know, dude? You've been smoking or drinking or doing that shit for the last like X amount of years. How do you know you can stop? Well, I just know I can. Well, you've never done it, so how do you know? <laughs> right. You know. So you I know thought what it was, the, the other challenge was too. It was like the holidays, right? The holidays. So yeah. yeah. I think most people. True. Yeah, and, and I think that might have been something for you, right? It, like it, it just like holidays happen, drinking happens. You normally do it. Right. You normally for me just, too. I mean, right. Yeah, for, no, for me, for me thing, too. To Thanksgiving is like social thing. like the wine is like. Back in the day, for me, it was either vodkas, uh, espresso martinis, <laughs> vodka sodas, or wine that was literally glung, 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 like just just to the face, one after <laughs> another, and I like, just been numb. But I was on then, then I was what unconscious for all these holidays with my family. Yeah. So it was literally, I think, the first Thanksgiving in a long time that last year and the last couple of years too. I haven't really been doing the drinking thing, but like for sure, like the first one that I can remember consciously of like having a Thanksgiving and remember everything about it and being present for it. And like, if you ask me, hey, what happened like three years ago for Thanksgiving? I'm like, I don't even know. I was like <laughs> fucking hammered. What do you mean? Like, so, yeah, it was like yeah. you look forward to a holiday yeah. so you can drink and have fun. Yeah, and it's relax, not even so much so the speak. drinking, but it's that part. It's, it's what comes whole, with it. Yes. It's the experience. Yeah, it's the like relaxation. The, right. Yeah, the not giving a shit. Yeah, All right. your inhibitions are go away, so yeah. you can like talk. You talk more freely, but. Yeah. With like what I love about what we've all been doing with the forgiveness, the parent stuff, the hypnotherapy, all that is in the meditating and the working out and all that stuff, right? And diets and everything is we're dealing with our shit like like without the um, what, do you, what am I looking for? Like the the extra like, without the added need of like a substance or something from the external to come like do it for us. Right. Like, yeah, if I smoked a joint, I'd be chill right now for sure. Right. If I drank, I would probably be a little crazy and do like stupid things like that I would normally not do. Okay, but I can still do those things now. I can figure out how to be calm now. I can still. I mean, the other day, remember I was doing the Ric Flair shit the other day. I I should do that one episode. Just start as Ric Flair. I had this like thing where Ric Flair was his wrestler who go woo back in the day. I put the belt on and the robe and the thing. That costume like haunts me because it just in random places. It it ends up like in a closet. I'll do the alter ego. So many random places. I can imagine. I know what you're saying now. It's my alter ego. Why would it haunt you? It's like oh because you just find it everywhere. Yeah. All of a sudden I'll see the wig. It's like my alter ego coming out of a drawer. I'm like where the fuck did this come from? It's like the alter ego dog trainer like where I'm just like yeah you smell the calm, smell that intensity, smell that testosterone. I'm like just like the way he did it. And the dogs are looking at me like, what the fuck is with this guy? I'm the best. Uh, I actually have that video. Yeah. I can put it on here. But yeah, the taser. I won't. Yeah, no, no, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Not right now. That's private. Yeah, well, no, we actually will show that one one day. It's freaking hilarious, I thought at least. Um, but yeah, today's December 1st, and it's like, normally the end of December, November, everyone's going to be like, finally, let's like get yeah. the joints going. Let's get the drinks. Let's get fucking crazy. And I'm like, man, we're all like, man, whatever. Who cares? We don't really give a shit. But, I will say, I mean, I think for everyone too this year, it, with everything going on pandemic obviously there's not as many holiday parties and get togethers but i know for me like i went to a few and i like had no yeah, desire. like i was totally okay so how not was having it a drink. You, you did a friendsgiving and you did thanksgiving mm-hmm. like how was how was that you, normally you would drink in those yeah. moments but how was it right. like you, nothing nothing happened no i actually liked n- not, not drinking doing it. Yeah. Wow. or like and you get to observe people too yeah that's the other thing is like wow this person's fucking that's true hammered as right, I, right i've yes. really never done that or i mean like look at this like, kid in. all of a sudden you see that like 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 a couple of them leave and they come back and they're all like mm-hmm. yeah let's eat and like, oh, i wonder where you guys <laughs> yeah. went you know like it's like dude it's oh, so obvious God. and you can see them just like not even on planet earth at that point so <laughs> it's interesting to observe and be like fuck do i look like that when i do this stuff it's yeah. like i don't want to feel like that always but just just not like being able to know that you have control over all that stuff and it mm-hmm. doesn't and the environment and things don't have control over you is to me the most important thing now very true from somebody who was like super addicted to all that shit you know so yeah and i think we all kind of had something like similar to that yeah mm-hmm. but um now that we did that and we did that challenge and we accepted that challenge i feel good about it yeah i feel, I feel great, great yeah you know yeah i, I want to keep glad, doing more challenges yes and i'm glad yeah. that we did it together also yeah. That because that was really good to have like friends that was like, how how's it going for you? It's like, yeah, yeah. it's good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, how yeah. was the holidays for you? Oh, and not fine. everybody did it, by the way. Not everybody did it, which is fine. Yeah. Like, no, we don't pressure anybody to do it. You know what I we're mean, gonna call it? The different pod- ways of podcast. Pressure, by the way, the podcast gang did it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we handled yeah, that. We, we handled really, that challenge. You know, and and it's fine. Like, I don't I don't force anybody to do any of this stuff. I don't force them to do the hypnotherapy, but I offer it, and we talk about it, and we do things. So there's people think you have to put pressure. Like, you need to do this. You need to do but. 
when like we talk about how the pack influences the, the dogs that we bring in, when the pack is all doing these things, that's literally that humans don't have control over that. They're gonna eventually see that and feel the pressure of like, how come I'm one of the ones who won't do it? Like why right. wouldn't, and that's all I, I want is like the questions to start being asked because that's the start of the self-awareness kind of thing, so. Yeah, that's true. Good stuff. Yeah. Well, it helps that you're always the guinea pig too. Yeah, You're always the first one to try yeah. everything. Like, we should do this. Should Why do does that. it help? Why does it help? It helps you? You know, it's funny. Leah I said think, to me. I other... think in general, because everybody sees him doing it, and it kind of gets your mind going. Like, oh, Leah said to me, that's that's that, or... the leader's doing it. Let's yeah. see. Let's Leah see. was saying something to me about there's like all these energies, like, and, and people, like, they find it. Forget what it is. We'll bring her when, we, when we, she comes, we can ask her or next time she comes on or whenever she comes on. Um, but she said that, like, my energy form is like the generator. Which is like, right, right. I'm like the one who's like, I makes a lot of sense. going, yeah. which makes a lot of sense for sure. Based off sometimes of what you're it's saying like, too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, sometimes it's like not the best being the general. Sometimes I'm like, where's like, the off switch? When I'm like, oh, it's time to go to bed. And I'm like, or it's just going. Not or when your energy's down yeah. and then you start seeing the energy mm-hmm. and everybody else is like kind of off and yeah. weird. Yeah. It's like, dang, I know. What, do so, I have to be the only one? Because then if, if somebody else was a generator for you, yeah. you would be getting motivated and inspired yeah. by them. Yeah. To, which is. Which is, I'll tell you, you know who else is a generator with that a doubt is Caesar. Yeah. That's a generator energy for sure. Mm-hmm. So going Definitely. around him, it's like, and then me and him together, it's like two generators just fucking pouring, like pumping out energy the whole time. It's like crazy to feel. Um, what else? Are we going to go to the questions? Or yeah, what? I think Let's it's do a good Do we have anything else? Nico's basically almost turning eight months, so we'll do something with him for the eight month. Like, oh, yeah. Listen, and by the way, people ask me this. It's like, oh my God, my dog is turning eight months on today. Like, what should I do on the last day of imprint? I'm like, listen, it's not exactly <laughs> like eight months. It's around eight month period, around the two months each time. Follow, play, explore in that order. Um, so he's, in my opinion, he's like way more advanced uh, because we've been doing all this stuff with him. But... It's not like exactly in eight months, but we'll bring him on just because like he's gonna be like right around eight month mark uh, next week. We'll do mm-hmm. something with him. Maybe we'll just make him sit there and do the do the podcast. The whole <laughs> entire podcast. Oh my God. You I think he'll love that. Move. Yeah, that would be great. He'll be, good, like, he'll be on place the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be good. So we'll do that. All yeah. right, let's do some questions. All right, let's yeah. get do to it. it. Okay, the first question comes from GSP Hans. Hi, Steve. How do hey. I get my new puppy uh, to respect me and give more attention when we walk or around the house, etc. cetera. Yeah. Hardly gives eye contact and listens to command after repeating myself over and over. Yeah, well don't repeat yourself over and over first, but we'll get to that. So this is what always happens, right? With the puppy thing is, like we talked about with Betsy in the beginning, is people start the relationship climbing all over. I mean, I'm gonna keep repeating this shit. I know I'm gonna sound like a broken record. Don't care because everyone's still doing, not everyone, but not all, but most people are still doing this stuff. Uh, they get the puppy and they, like you were when you first saw her, is mm-hmm. like, is like, oh my God, look at this puppy and oh, she's my baby. And, this, and they do this, all this crap, right? Petting, 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 nurturing, nurturing, showing the dog that you're a follower, showing them you're not a leader, letting them be disrespectful, all the shit that I said in the beginning. And then they take them out on a walk and, Steve, how come my dog won't, I'm not saying this person's doing that by the way, but how, but, they, but it's usually, it's probably what's happening. How come my dog won't follow me and give me eye contact? Well, because she sees you as a follower already. Mm-hmm. That's likely what's happening. And, and so that's the first thing is like, what am I doing away from the walk that's causing this to happen? The other things are is, is how much are you following? Are you creating rules, boundaries, limitations from the day you get the dog in the house, right? Then are you doing things to engage the nose? Like let's just say, she's, she's trying to say things and get the dog's attention and the dog's not paying attention, but Likely she's being a human doing dog training and going to eyes and ears and not using the nose. So Nico's recall is like incredible right now, but it's not because like we used all these tools and everything. The tool that I used was food and his nose. That's all. And my energy. Obviously the first thing is my energy. So with a puppy, what I think is one of the greatest things to do, you've seen me do it on here, is a puppy's doing whatever. Before I start talking to the puppy, I take food and I don't want to make the noise. Like, do you have the food there? Like, yeah. So this is what people do, right? They get the food. They make the noise, ears right away, right? Or then they take the food out. Look at me, look at me, look at me. So they're doing eyes and ears right from the beginning. I would rather have this in like a jar or something that doesn't make a lot of noise or on me in like a treat pouch or whatever and um, go up to the puppy wherever they are. I did this with Foxy too, a lot of videos of this. Maybe we can like send, put a link of a swipe Foxy. up with Foxy. Yeah, I know. Because the reason I said that because Hunter and, um, and Lexi were texting me yesterday mm-hmm. about that, that, that Hunter is now. So Hunter Pence is one of our clients and he's play, played for the San Francisco Giants, the World Series champ, the whole thing. 
and recently retired, and he's going to be uh, now being a broadcasting for the Major League Baseball. No way. Oh, nice. Yeah, so he said, so they were texting and saying that, like, hey, we're going to have an opportunity probably to come to the East Coast a lot more, and this and that. We'd love to, like, stay at the ranch and bring Voxy and all that shit. And we were, Cassie was, like, freaking the fuck out because <laughs> she's obsessed with Voxy. So that's awesome. But uh, with Voxy and all these dogs, what I would do is throughout the day, I see them just hanging out, doing whatever, wave the scent, and then I escape. So not run away, but I would wave the scent and start backing away from the dog. So it gives the dog the opportunity to come. So they're coming. Scent first, nose, eyes follow. And while the dog is coming to me, I would say, Foxy, come. I would Nico. I'm not going to say it because he's going to be like whining because he's not going. <laughs> but his name and come, right? Nico, come. So I do this, scent, back away as they're coming to me. Like, as they're getting almost here, then I stop and give them the food right there. Good girl, good boy, that. Let them go off. Or, or another thing you could do is instead of just giving them the food there, when they come to you, good pet, and then toss the food kind of on the floor over there so you can go somewhere else. So while they're going to get the food on the floor, you go mm-hmm. like over here, and the dog's like, where'd they go? And then they start coming in. Coxie, come. Nico, come. Good boy. While the dog's doing it already. You know what I mean? But I think it's the best to always just use the nose and bring them. Nose and bring them around. And that's like literally putting a leash on an eight-week-old. I, like, like this guy and Foxy, remember, they were just following me wherever the hell I went. <laughs> like, where is this guy going? Like, constantly because my nose is telling me to follow that. Food is primary reinforcer, which tells the mind and the body, do more of this shit because food's going to come. Like, I don't want to confuse people. Like, it drives me crazy when people use, like, the dog training ver- verbose. Like, like, so, through the, like, and then it's in there with, like, all this, like, t- like whatever. Feeding their <laughs> ego and talking about how great, like, they know all the words. And then the, and then the public is like this. I have no idea what this person's talking about. <laughs> like, I'm talk, trying to talk to you guys like you're my friend. Like, yo, I'm having an issue. My dog's not coming. Bro, put fucking food in front of that dog's nose and start walking away. When the dog comes to you, he's going to say his name and come or her name and come. He's going to nose, eyes, and you tell the ears what that means. Got it? They're like, oh, shit, that makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. Good. That's what I want you to do. Okay, next. Oh, a next one already. Yeah. We're on a roll today. <laughs> yeah. Okay. This one is Why, not a good enough explanation? No, I think it was good. I know it was. <laughs> of course you do. Let's go. Okay. I don't know who this person is. Okay. Uh, Danielle Mordaga. Oh, God. <laughs> How do Cassie's you st- sister, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Danielle. Hey, Danielle. Okay. How do you stop a puppy from picking up something that falls on the floor? Yeah. Food, pills, tissues, etc. The second something falls on the floor, she runs to get it, mm. asking for a friend. Thank you. Yeah. So, listen, like, a lot of people... Th- all right. So, first of all... When you see a kid, right, a kid who's like uh, like a toddler or, or what, starts crawling around and all that stuff, how do they explore the world with their, with their hands, right? They're, and they, they actually, kids do it with their mouths too. They grab things and just put, their, put it in their mouth too. Mm-hmm. But they're touching everything with their hands. But a puppy doesn't have hands to do that. Their, their paws are on the ground, right? So they explore everything with their, with their mouth. Or nose ideally, right? But mouth also. They try to chew and put their mouth on everything. What's this? What's that? So it's, this is the thing. It's a lot of times the human reaction to the puppy going to get the tissue, going to get, what was the other things? Tissue. Pills, food. Pills. Pills. Okay. Pills. Pills. People take supplements. Yeah. Pills or supplements? Why is there pills all over the floor? Yeah. Whoa, <laughs> What's whoa. going on over there? But Clean up the party. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, it's not partying so much. No. Or invite going back. Do a sober in December. <laughs> or invite Steve. Yeah. Or invite me over since it's December now. No. Um... <laughs> But yeah, it's like, it, it, it's number one, you have to puppy proof your house, okay? It's like, because you're getting a dog there, so you have to make sure everything's off the floor, right? But there's obviously things going to be around and doing this stuff. So when the puppy's going to get those things, how are you reacting to it, Danielle? Are you reacting? No, no, no. Paisley, no, no. Hey, hey, no, bad girl. Don't get, give me that thing back. So it's telling the dog, like, She also what? said that she's asking for a friend, Yeah, right? bullshit. Yeah. She's asking so for herself. She's asking for a friend. <laughs> Don't give me that shit. So that's, that becomes like, like your reaction to the dog says, why is this person creating such value around that thing on the floor? So your reaction is huge to it, right? The other part is, is like how often are you engaging the nose? So that could be a situation where the dog goes and gets the tissue. We don't overreact. We come and wave a scent. And then as the dog's spitting out the tissue, drop. Good. And then you can pay for that. Um, another situation is... Listen, because you will get dogs, like Nico was one of these guys because he's pushy as hell, was like, I'm just going to spend my first two to three months like trying to eat rocks off the floor and swallow them. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Remember that he guy? Yeah. He's like, oh, Steve's not looking. Here's a pebble. Oh. <laughs> I try to eat it really quick. 
So this is the thing with this, right? Is like when you get, this is why every dog is different. It's hard. I know Paisley. So it's one for me that like what you have to do with her because she's, because we've created this. Not that, you, not that she is like that. We've created, but likely the overreactions, because I know Cassie and I know Danielle, is the overreaction likely happened when those things happen. So that's either for me with a puppy is using uh, the leash and like the dog is, let's just say like we didn't want them to get the phone. As the dog's like walking over and almost to the phone, it's like not a jerk, not a pull, not a yank on the leash, but like a, like a flick on the leash to create what? And then no, and right in that moment, like no. And then they look at you and you just act like, eh, what, about, what, about, what, you know? Then they're like, I'm trying for that thing again. Boop, no. Here's the issue with that. If it's a real problem with a puppy like a Nico, which is like, I don't give a shit about like, okay, so now I got it. I'll, I will just won't do that when the human's around because it's mm -hmm. associated to the human telling them, no, don't get it, right? So with Nico, what I did, even from a young ass age, because this became an issue, and likely he, he where he grew up, like was was way more outdoors, so he was probably getting away with eating that shit way before I got him. Um, so I didn't make a big deal about it, but it was pretty obsessive of him going through. If you remember, yes. So what I did with him is at a young age, I just I got a vibrate collar, like the vibration collar, it was literally like a like like you put your phone on it because it just distracts the mind. So what I would do is I would set it up, I would put him out like on a long leash or just off leash or whatever. And I would wait for him to go get it. And I had the thing remote in my pocket or in my hand. And he's going to, towards the, uh, like the thing. And right when he would do it and go, sorry, yeah, I'd press it, low level. <laughs> what the hell? And then when he looked at me, I made sure that we weren't even paying it, like acting like we weren't even paying it. We had nothing to do with it. I just was over there doing something else, right? As far away as I could, the better, as far as I'm concerned, right? So the more he did that, he did it a few times. And then from that, it was done. I took the collar off and it's over with. Why? Because it started associating him putting it on that the rock does that to him. So the association was when I go and put my, I can smell this thing all day long. But if I go and put my mouth on it and try to ingest this thing, that thing starts vibrating on me. <laughs> what the hell is that? And not that he got scared or panicked or freaked out or anything like that. It was just like, this is a weird sensation. It feels, but I don't understand what this is. And it doesn't feel like good. Because look, dogs are like literally, it sounds the wrong way, but dogs just like kids are pain or pleasure. AKA good or bad. So when I put the rock in my mouth, was that a good feeling or was it not so good of a feeling? Right. So in the beginning it felt good because he was playing, yeah, okay, I like that, <laughs> I like that. But then now it wasn't as good because it's like putting my mouth on it and it's like, what the hell? I don't know, I'm just gonna do something else instead of that. And then he's, it's over with, it's done at that point. He doesn't eat shit off the, foot, off the ground anymore. He will like pick up sticks and stuff like that, but I let him, so it's not a big deal to me. If I let him do it, I, but I tell him when and where he can do it. So listen, if, if this is like, if, these are the, where it gets a little challenging because I don't, I know her, so I'm telling her what to do with that specific one. And you can do the vibrate with her easily because Paisley's super sensitive too. And you can do a very low level, put, and what you would have to do, here's another thing if you're going to do this. And by the way, nobody will talk about this shit because they're like, he's recommending to put collars on puppy. It's like, all right, okay. What I'm telling Danielle to do in this situation, because I know the specific dog, and I know that she's working on the relationship, I know she had the dog here, and we've done the puppy enrichment with this dog and everything, is because Paisley does have a, is sensitive, but she's pretty confident in who she is too, is put the collar on low level. You have to do it where you put the collar on way before somewhere else, okay? Then you're gonna put some tissues on the floor, but it has to be the tissues on the floor. The dog cannot see you putting the tissues on the floor. Mm. It has to be a situation where like in the dog's mind, it just appeared. So even be careful. Here's the box of tissues, me putting my hand on it and putting it on the floor. That's related to the scent of me too. Mm -hmm. So you may want to put true. like a rubber glove on or something else or whatever, or have somebody else do it. Who's like not going to have a relationship with the dog, put that stuff around. I actually did this for a guy uh, from Barstool Sports years ago in Hoboken. I won't say who, but um, he had a big issue with his, his dog eating the crap out of all the, the baby toys. Mm -hmm. And he's like, bro, I need help with this thing. Like, like my wife's gonna like go nuts if this dog eats another thing. And we did the same thing. We put the vibrate collar on. I took the dog for a walk, vibrate. I said, bro, so I want you to put all the, every single baby toy that he likes on the thing. We go inside, I put him in a sit, take the thing off. He goes in and the dog was like, oh my God, <laughs> heaven, all these toys are here. Because they were also overreacting like crazy to all the toys, right? Especially the wife was going nuts with that stuff. As soon as the, the dog went to it, and he was a sensitive guy. I'm like, what the hell? And then he tried again and again. Like, it was like three times. And then, and then we just continued talking. So what's going on with Barstool? You guys doing good? Like, dog was done with it. Never ate it again. So 
it's not the most ideal way to do it. The best way to do it is with a dog who's not obsessive about his limit issues is you just do it. No, we don't do that. And just not make a big deal. Don't validate it and continue on. And always engage the nose and say, look what I have instead of that crap on the floor. That's the best way to do it, right? But there are situations we have to be real and I want to help you guys. And I'm going to talk about the situations that nobody wants to talk about that there are ones where using like something like a vibrate can really help you with that situation. So just to review really quick, if that's the thing you can try with the leash, no, and then redirect from there. So it's like, no, and then try again. No, once they give it up, then you grab the nose and then go and walk away. You can do the recall stuff and all the things we were just talking about. If that's not working and they're still obsessive about it, or they're trying to get it when you're not there, then we need to do something like a vibrate collar, in my opinion, to do that. And it works like a charm. It's not something like, because like, look, they're going to tell you these other trainers are going to play games with you for fucking months and months and months of the dog sometimes gets it, sometimes does it. You're negotiating with the dog and this and that. When this thing can be done with a vibration, vibration. It's not like the dog is like having a heart attack. Like when your phone vibrates in your pocket, do you like run out the window, jump out the window? <laughs> like because you're terrified? Well, no, I think that's like, the thing. People don't understand like, yes. really what a vibrate collar is, what right. a collar is. They don't. And that's why I did that video uh, yesterday with, the, with Nico in the park. You guys can check it out on Instagram. It, with Nico in the park, maybe we can put a link in the, in the, con- in the caption or whatever. With, there, was a, there was a turkey in the middle of the dog park. <laughs> so I showed about nose, eyes, ears, about how I taught nose, the eyes, the ears, all to be calm surrender with or calm follower with the turkey. And I had the remote collar on, so it was a perfect example for me to show how I conditioned him to the remote collar. So what I did with him with the remote collar was I taught him all the shit that he knows already for months. Then I brought the e-collar in at super low level and layered it on top of whatever he kn- or what he already knew. So that's what I'm doing, the tr- like the training, the obedience, the, that kind of stuff with it. I'm doing it that way. With something like this, I don't want the puppy to know what it means because I want it to be more of a surprise to the puppy. Like, what? What was that? And then they move away, good job, let's do something else. Right. Like it's no big deal. It's like, eh, I guess that tissue or that pill or that rock just, I don't know, whatever. Anyway, I'm gonna do something else. Because I think a lot of people panic and they try yeah. and take the, like whatever it is, the food, the tissue, whatever. Which I out understand of the if it's mouth. a pill and shit like that. Or if yeah. it's like, a, I know people well, look, on the street a piece of glass and they yeah. try and get it out of the dog's mouth. I know, mouth that's to me no that's... game. We have, dog, we have a dog here like that who is eating glass and chicken bones and all that shit. That to me, that's like, it's extremely unethical for someone to start playing games with that shit. Well, just to do a trade and just do this. When that, when that dog has a sharp ass piece of glass in his mouth and is tearing up his mouth, you're going to start negotiating and do a trade? Fuck that shit. I don't believe in that at all. Mm-hmm. You have to be able to let that dog know quickly that glass, you can't put that in your mouth because you're going to hurt yourself and you don't understand. Obviously, the human has to, has to be better about the reactions and all that right. and it can be very prevented. But if it's gotten to this point and we already have the problem, what are we going to do? Just not talk about it or say, nope, you can't do that. And then have your dog at a risk of swallowing a bone and choking and dying or t- tearing up their insides. Needing surgery. That's wrong. That's to me the wrong way to do it. There's, they'll say like putting a vibrate collar on is wrong. And I'm like, Pfft. letting a dog or giving them the idea that they can still do this shit is wrong in my opinion. So that's the real stuff. And I'm, I'm, listen, this is what I do with my dogs. This is what I do with our client dogs. I'm not saying it's the only way. I'm not saying it's the, the perfect way. I'm not saying it's the 100% right way. This is what we do, and it works. I'm just going by the data of what works over and over and over again. And you can see Nico. I don't, you, I'm sure you've seen him. He doesn't look terrified to pick shit up off the floor <laughs> or like pick up a toy or a bone or put things in his mouth. He's over it. He doesn't care. It's like, I just don't eat those rocks. Got it. It's like a simple thing. So, you know, it's like a kid, right? I was it's just like, going to say, it's like teaching a kid. Like, what are you going to do with a kid when, he, when the toaster's on and the kid's all of a sudden trying to put his hand inside the toaster? Are you going to just say, hold on, buddy. So, would you like to have some uh, Fruit Loops instead? <laughs> well, the kid's hand is sizzling and burning away. Or, or are you going to say, no, we don't do that. Right. You can't do it. A kid you can well, rationalize with. In a calm with. way, because I think a, lot, a, calm of, way. a lot of people do will scream. Oh, and oh, everyone does it with kids. I see it all. Everyone's be dramatic. Oh, I'm really good with my, when, when the kids are there, my brother's you're really good with these kids. I don't consider myself like an expert in children, but I'm just, my energy is what makes sense to a child. Mm-hmm. Right? They, they see me not overreacting and stuff. So anyway, I'm going to keep giving you guys a shit. And if people have issues with it, guess who cares? Not me, because <laughs> I want you guys to have success with the dogs. I really don't give a fuck. I'm not here. I'm not getting paid by anyone to do this thing. I'm not getting like anything out of this besides helping people, which is you what care. I want. You care. You care. Don't say you care. Yeah. No, I really don't. I really don't care what the opinions are of others. Of you how don't care we do about things. those opinions, but you do care. Which I care is why about everybody which here. Is why you do these things? Correct. Right. I care a lot about you guys and getting getting the success with their dogs and telling them the truth and the reality of it and being authentic. But I'm not getting paid to not say things. If you notice, when we started the show, there wasn't 49 fucking sponsors before this that I have to like watch what I say to keep that. Don't care. 
I want to help you guys, so I care for you guys and want to give you the real shit. And I'm trying to give you as much as we possibly can. This is how I'd be talking to my clients, to anybody. This is like all the info. It's not like I'm giving like the, uh, like what do you call it? Like, like, a, like here's the taste and then go to the link and then buy the rest of it. It's right. like, no, this is the whole shit right here. I'm giving you it all, right? Like silver platter. Now it's up to you to go and actually apply it. And if you have questions, ask in the comments or direct message me and I'll help you more with that stuff. So I think this might be our last question because yeah, um, it, it might be like a kind of involved question, but it's good. It's a really good one. It is, it is a good question. Yeah, I think, I think so. it's, it's my favorite one from today. I think okay. so too. Go ahead. Okay. Next. Janice would love what, what's the best way to get all the humans in the pack to be committed to proper training and being a consistent leader in our human pack. My partner gets frustrated easily and doesn't focus on being consistent and sending the right message. He just wants to move on to the next step and will let inappropriate behavior slip without addressing it. Yeah. I'm not sure how to help him overcome his frustration to be in the right mindset to lead and communicate with our puppy the right way. Yeah. It's a really good one. This is why it's like, um, like always like the um, helping dogs overcome human problems. That's not a dog problem. That's a human problem. So whoever the partner is has frustration issues. This is what happens a lot, right? People come to me, this dog really makes me anxious. No, wrong. <laughs> you are dealing with anxiety that the dog is shining his fucking spotlight on mm. and saying, hey, mom, you have anxiety and I'm becoming anxious because of your anxiety. Not your, the anxiety. That's something to think about too, really quick. Uh, a side note is I talk to my staff about this, my clients, and it was something that worked for me and when I worked with Tony Robbins and all this stuff, not calling it my anxiety. Mm -hmm. so I, uh, yeah, I have anxiety and my anxiety causes me to. Like right, not making you, it yours. As much as you want to claim it to be your own and you're the only one, it's mine. Don't, you're not allowed to have it. There's billions of people who have it all over the world, right, who deal with anxiety. And anxiety is just created from a situation of uh, either insecurity or an, an excitement and anticipation, impatient, all that shit, right? So, and it's been practice. And it's likely, going back to the beginning of this podcast, something to do with parenting or someone who raised you had that crap. So if you're dealing with anxiety, I ask this question honestly, do I have anxiety away from my dog in any situations? And then ask question number two, do either of my parents or either of the people who raised me or anybody who I was around during my childhood, did any of them have anxiety? So it's not yours. It's been passed on through generation to their generation. You developed it from somewhere else. You weren't born and saying like, you know what I want to be when I grow up? Anxious. Like that's what <laughs> I'm like, you don't want that. You know what I mean? Think about a kid. They're not anxious. They're like doing their own thing. They're what's this yeah. mom? What's that? And then, and then the more they're with that parent or that grandparent or brother or whatever it is right. who, who raised them, teachers, all that, it's another whole topic, but who are raising these kids in to, to be a certain way. And they're confusing the fuck out of kids. Yeah. And just like they're confusing the hell out of dogs. So that's one to, it's a, it, that's not an easy one because if your partner is not uh, prepared or wanting to, um, overcome that stuff what is the frustration and all that kind of thing she gets frustrated yeah. usually which is anger by the way just usually. anger and like when people say i get really frustrated it's like they know that the, the, it's like the higher in my opinion it's like the higher self knows that they can that that it's possible but the anger and the lack of understanding how to do it is like what's creating the frustration does right. that make sense what i'm saying yeah so it's like all right so I could be good with this dog. I, like I can feel that I could do this. I just don't know how. Mm -hmm. My ego is blocking me from really trying to understand the information from my partner or from the outer world. And I have um, uh, an anger that's, that's making me feel tense about this situation and I can't figure it out. So now mm -hmm. I'm frustrated. The reason I'm saying that, because that was me, by the yeah. way. Like I would be like, I'm so fucking frustrated right now. Because you knew there was a way to do it, but like the anger and the and anxiety and the excitement. It and all, all takes things, over. It all takes over. It's like all the things that we were conditioned to be like, which is why I, um, is the word implore? What's the word implore mean? Implore? I implore you guys to, or. Yeah, like strongly suggest. Strongly suggest you guys to explore that parenting that I'm talking about or the growing yeah. up thing that I'm talking, you're talking about and to go and look at it without anger and look at it in a way of objective, non-emotional and saying like, if I was like, like literally under a lie detector test right now, would I be able to say that like my, that anxiety has not come from a parent or didn't come from anywhere? Like, would I be lying yeah. or saying that it just formed inside of me or my dog gave it to me? The dog wasn't born with it either. <laughs> don't, give me that, don't give me that shit either. So 
That's what, that's why, and again, this is why I love dogs because it's a hundred percent honest animal that's saying, Hey, I'm becoming a mirror or reflection of this energy that's, that's around here. And I'm feeling this way and I'm, I'm becoming just like you are or becoming our, um, um, my, my behavior is becoming a result of your unstable energy or imbalance. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing wrong with it. Right. We're like, People think it's like they're, they're, and listen, when you're in an insecure state, I'm speaking for myself again too. When you're in an insecure state, it's like you keep very guarded of like you protect this like insecurity, you protect this anxiety, you protect this like uh, frustration, this lack of knowledge, you just protect it because it's scary to go deal with it and admit it because what? That becomes vulnerability and vulnerability mm-hmm. feels like discomfort, like, like someone can come and attack you when you're vulnerable. So that's why I did that one video a while ago to show people like, I don't give a shit. Like I might, my, sh- I, I should stop saying I don't give a shit. I do give a shit, which that's is why, why, that's why I said yeah. that earlier. I, I was what like, I, you do care. I have to clarify. It's, thank you for doing that because I have to clarify that I don't give a shit what people think about my past, my story, my thing, meaning that if they want to judge it, uh, label me, like attack me, that, like I'm secure enough that it doesn't affect me anymore at all. But I do care enough to share it with, with people so they can say, ah, oh, like, Damn, that guy, I thought that he was just like this dog trainer. It's like all things were going well for him. His dogs are good. And all. No, I came from like, like, like where I was in life was a really, really bad place to get here. But I, I think it's important to talk about the vulnerability. And well, I sure, like but I a lot of people can, you can relate to a lot of people. They can relate to you. You know how light, yeah. You know how light I felt after that video and posting that video? It felt great. It was another piece of my growth to be able yeah. to share that level of like vulnerability for myself. It wasn't mm-hmm. easy. I'm not saying it was easy. There was a lot of discomfort doing that. But I got through it. So, all right. Getting back to the question. How would you pronounce her name again? Who's her that? name? Yeah. The question um, asker. Her? Janice? Janice? Jenna. So, if, okay, so let's let's show your uh, partner, right? Because we were talking about her partner, her boyfriend. Is that who we're talking yeah, about? Yeah, what I, all right. Yeah. So, let's show, let's show him this clip to talk about the fact that you're saying be vulnerable. Yeah. And explore yourself. Excuse me. Because what she's asking is, how do I help him? But technically, it's an inner issue. Yeah. That if she mm-hmm. can just bring his awareness to it, he can actually work on that yeah. himself. But she can't do anything no. for him in and, that. And regard. making him do it or saying, you are, you are, you are. Right. Or you have to. Or you, you have need to. to yeah. You're doing this. You're doing that. That's just going to enhance the defensiveness yeah. about it and like the frustration. And remember, it's like... like we don't know if it's a he, by the way, but whoever it is, it's, it's his partner. So well, we she know. said he. Oh, he. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, his so, frustration. Yeah. Yeah. It's 2020. You know. I gotta. So, <laughs> but but we we have to find out is it is it a situation that like is she putting a lot of pressure on this thing? Right. And Fultman putting the foot fo- because I'm gonna ask her what's her name Janice or something. Janice. 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 Um, are you are you doing everything like as best as you can be doing it? Because if you're not, it's possible. Because I'm speaking again from experience. Uh, it's easy to take the focus off yourself and then go put it on somebody else and saying mm-hmm. he's not doing, he isn't, he's that. And, and listen, there's likely things that he's doing that aren't, but that aren't, aren't the best for the dog. But are you doing your part a hundred percent and being like excellent with the dog and doing everything you can? Is your energy per- perfectly on point? If not focus more on your own thing. And then you can also then lead in that way by example of showing whoever it is that or her husband or partner or whatever Showing, look what I'm able to do, but not even saying, look what I'm able to do. You're saying it just through it, through action of just being like the dog. The dog really listens to you. It's like, hey, uh, like I'll take over from here. Don't worry. Let me show you, or not. Let me show. You. Not even let me show you. I'll, I'll I'll be able to do this. If he's asking for advice, that's awesome. If he doesn't want to hear it, like this is a situation. Like if he doesn't want to hear it, then there's really not much you can do. Yeah, I've been learning about how to um, give advice. But you can't give unsolicited advice, right? Correct. Yeah. So it's always, can I can I make you a suggestion? Yeah. Are you are you open to like hearing something that I actually learned today? And they if they say no, then you have to move Ooh, I, on. I just came up with something good. Another thing too that works a lot is sending like videos, sending links, sending articles, sending stuff, but sending it without expectation. Yeah. So like, for instance, let's just say like my, that was my, like I had a partner and they didn't want to, they weren't like seeing it or whatever. And I was try, trying to get them to see it and see it. If I sent them something on that topic or on topics like it and just sent the topic, that's it. What do you mean by this? Nothing. It's, it's something that I found interesting. That's it. Or you're saying I am like this. I'm not, I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying that this is an interesting topic. What did you think about it? Hmm. 
if he has emotional reaction, he, that's his honest thing. Now we go back to the parent thing, and that's right. the, it all begins, is my point. That's what I was going to say, is then you start sending stuff to, to your partner, and then if they get frustrated or annoyed that you're even just sending stuff, and it, you yeah. just become like, yeah. they but that's feel on them that you're at overbearing. That well, right. That's on them at that point, because but then I they're doing But I can see that happening also. And their parent, likely mom or dad or yeah, grandparent or whoever, was frustrated and angry growing up about things like that, or had a situation where the partner, maybe like dad, maybe dad was in a way of like mom hounded him. Yeah a lot and mm -hmm. he watched that as a kid right. and then said like here goes my wife now yeah, my yeah. girlfriend mm -hmm. hounding the, the fuck thing. out of me yeah. right. about this dog thing like leave me alone leave me alone he's reacting the way dad did or it can be a lot of different things I'm not saying that's definitely the case no. but, but it would be good to, to I'm better... imploring them to take a look at that <laughs> yeah. Yeah. to yeah, better absolutely. understand your partner to know how to communicate with yes. them and that's what's going to be the most true. effective exactly. too so, so what's I... going to be most effective for them right. so, so making the suggestion can I can I suggest something Yeah. I asked this question on this podcast today and are you are you down to hear are what he says? To, are you open this? to hearing this? And, and if, if he they're says, now, no, yeah, what do you do? Totally understand. Yeah, I understand. Like maybe, and then and then you just continue on doing what you can with the dog. At that point, if someone's in complete denial, will not open up in any way, and you try a lot of things, meaning without uh, expectations mm -hmm. and that, that may become time to assess relationship. Right. And that's if you're true. working I mean, on I your own growth, though, though, like if no, you're working true. on your own growth, then you may yeah. just grow apart from your partner because right. you're kind of. That's on right. this trajectory going up mm -hmm. and improving and if they're just staying here eventually i think you're just gonna yeah and that's what i'm saying i think it's like really ways. focusing on yeah. yourself in and these that's moments. okay by the way too yeah of it's course okay. if you if you grow apart it's okay yeah it's yeah that, that's that's part of life mm -hmm. that's, that's of what life. it is and if like that's the, the the other person is like not willing to do anything and like screw you i'm going to stay complacent and not grow in any way yeah. then you have to assess do i want to be with somebody like that right it's, it's not going to enhance situation. your life. Huh? It's not going to enhance your life. Yeah, that's so. a reality situation. I mean, nobody wants to talk about that shit either, but mm -hmm. that's the truth. And I can tell you for a fact, though, like just for her, I was definitely like early on in my growth. I was actually really like, and I'm sure she is too. She's probably following our content and excited about this dog yeah. psychology thing and wants her dog to do great and all that. So I was excited about my growth stuff. I was super excited. But then I found myself like when I started getting more towards like getting deeper into the growth or like digging deeper in myself. That I was like, eh, instead of that, let me go talk to all these other people about all the things I'm doing and try to like almost force them to do it. It's right. not your responsibility to do that. Right. It's your responsibility to take care of your own shit. And if people are open to it and asking questions and want to know about it or are interested, share it with them. But share it with them without expectation, meaning that if they take right. it and they say, eh, I think that's bullshit, I think that's nothing. Okay, I understand. If anyone watching this thing said about this, well, we're talking about the vibrate collar, the parent thing, or the, they said, this guy's full of shit, fuck him, blah, blah. Well, I would still implore you to look at your anger. However, <laughs> that's fine. I, I'm not offended by it. I know it has worked for me. I know it's worked for a lot of our staff. I know it's worked for our clients. And that's just what is what I'm seeing in real world from experience, from myself, and from seeing from the people around me and doing my own, not just taking somebody else's word for it. You know, everyone's mm -hmm. taking someone else's word for it and then just parroting it and repeating it over and over again. Like, it's like, but these are like what I always hear with these positive trainers. They can't hear anything. They don't want to hear anything. They don't want to hear anything else besides like positive reinforcement is the only way to train a dog. It's like, okay, um, there are other ways. I've proven it over and over. I have like thousands of hours of videos that have proved other ways that there are. We've had thousands of dogs who come in this way. Do you want to even like take a look at it? No. E-collar mm -hmm. bad. Okay. You know, it happens in politics. It happens everywhere. This is what it is. People just say like, I'm taking somebody else's word Sorry, for I'm it. I'm laughing because it's just like so spot on though. Yeah, like, it is. It's the attitude about the situation. Think about politics right, right now. And, and regardless the fact that you bring a little bit of humor into it, yeah. it just makes it like so much yeah. better and true. It's true because like yeah. even thinking about the politic thing now, like people are just grab a side, they take yeah. someone else's word yeah. for it. Usually mainstream media who's like a business trying to create fear and panic and, and get you, oh my God, and then I'm on this team and fuck your team. And then, mm -hmm. and then it creates that whole situation. So that's right. like the same, it's the same thing. And then they're just hearing somebody else said, joining in and then attacking others or like yelling at other people about it all emotional i'm like okay I don't, if we, how could you vote for this person how could you vote for that person well um i looked at the policies i looked at the person you did your themselves. research i did research and based on his view on this and that or her view on this and that this is why i chose them you're a bad person okay that's fine if that's what you think it's it's like that's their opinion and that's that's to me the biggest amount of growth is then like Listen, I think we're just in a world where everyone is so concerned about other people's opinions of them, of themselves. My question is, is if you're so concerned about that, what is your own opinion of yourself? That's the biggest question to be asked. What it's do you think question. of yourself? What's your own self-talk? 
this is where it gets back to the more core shit, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And if your self talk sucks, where did that come from? Mm -hmm. Let's go take a look. Because that's not necessarily <laughs> you. And parents, let's it's go. Funny. You know what's funny? Is it's self talk is not necessarily. No, you. it's not you. It's not mm -hmm. you talking to yourself. No. It's other thoughts, other people's opinions implanted into your that's head right. that yes. you tell yourself. That's right. Negativity, yeah. anger, frustration, all this stuff that someone has brought to you and said, yeah, that's the way I think too. Yeah. That's not your, it's not true. That's not what you really think. That's not you. That's someone else's opinion of you that you're taking as like the gospel, as like, this is truth. This is what it is. I'm a bad person. I'm anxious. I'm this thing. No, you're not. Maybe you're dealing with some things, but explore them objectively and see. And start talking to yourself. All right. To finish this thing out is because we're going to finish on this question. Yeah, okay. yes. we're basically wrapping it. Yeah, up. is when is we were talking about this recently. I was talking to Adam about this. I think I talked to you about it too. Is I'm I'm still on my growth thing, right? So a lot of times I find myself and I get I have my old things that I'm still dealing with and working, and it's like I I, I look at it now as like it's um like evaporating this like stuff inside of me that now I've seen it and I'm dealing with it and going through it and open to it and I want to like face that shit like right on like that's this look at this little prick on my finger <laughs> like like behaving like a little prick no but this little prick like like now I see that instead of being like no 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 I don't have any problem with that shit like all avoiding and all like like why are you bringing this up and all mm -hmm. this you know. No, I'm like, let me go like face that shit right in front. Like, what is the deal with that? Mm -hmm. Let me figure that out. I'm so, so glad you you say that because yeah. uh, they actually sent two of those little prickers. Oh, I ain't doing another <laughs> so one. We have, so we have <laughs> an <laughs> extra one you can practice, practice with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah okay. You can practice Pr on yourself. Prick yourself. Words. Yeah. <laughs> um, but saying instead of like when you're se for self-talk and this is like the affirmation stuff and all that, right? Is it sounds crazy, but let's just say we were going with the, the finger... Like I have, I have no issue with pricking my own finger. I have absolutely no issue with pricking my own finger. I start repeating that over. But you and have over. issues with other people pricking your finger. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you see what I'm saying? Like it's not the self talk has to be like. So what is everybody saying? Think about it, right? I am anxious. Mm -hmm. I am anxious. They're saying that in present form, which is now creating this law of attraction thing. The universe. They're putting into the universe. I am anxious. The universe has got it. You are anxious in the, your future days, weeks, months, whatever, until. I'm no longer anxious. I am not anxious. I am mm -hmm. happy. I am calm. I am certain. I am confident. Like those are the things I am. Even though you may not feel that way right now, you're starting to change that narrative, starting to change yes. the pattern, starting to change what it is. I am, I am certain. I am calm. You say saying these things over and over. Then all of a sudden your universe starts saying to you, huh, you are? So we need to make you start doing these things. And you find yourself doing things that like, wow, I would have never really done that. My point is, is like, when I got this ranch, when I when this thing happened, it wasn't in my mind saying one day I'll, it, it did start like that. I'll be honest, until I figured this out, it wasn't that I am going to have a ranch, right? It was or one day we'll have a ranch. That's how it started. But then what it changed to is that we have a large ranch, we have mm -hmm. a large place, a dog psychology center, a place that we can do all this kind of stuff at. We can help rebuild that people. We help people find calmness, build confidence. They find happiness. They get out of their comfort zone. It's a safe place. That's what I was saying. We have that. We're doing that. This is what it is. We got here. We got this thing. Now the next one is for me is that now we own tons of property around here and we have like a zillion acre. I don't know how many a zillion is, but we have a lot of acres <laughs> of land here. And in my mind, I've already pictured we have cabins throughout this place. We have dog parks. We have pools. We have uh, a spa. We have grooming. We have meditation. We have workouts. We have diet plate, uh, nutrition. It's literally how you got this place. The, same, exact, exact, exact. the same exact way. Yeah. And it, you know what's funny? What, what, Thank you, buddy. What's funny about that whole thing is I was just texting uh, Jamie to let her know that, um, to tell Leah yeah. that the door is open. <laughs> and because I felt that it was going to be about this time. Yeah. yeah. It was going to be That's coming so in. Yeah. So um, hopefully that text reaches yeah. her. So we can finish it here, but that yeah, was but awesome. And I, hopefully that, that like, really made good. sense to you guys of like, like I am, like, what do you want to be? And start saying you are that now. Yeah. But you have to start believing it too. Well, that's, that's not just the saying, biggest and thing. And it might just start just by saying yeah, it. Steve. Just start. Yeah. Let's do that. So I'm gonna. This is this is how we're doing. We're starting to like produce the hell out of our podcast in a really good way. Can you tell us one more time if we can do it in the most Shh. concise after we? Why, Jake? After we calm him down. Yeah. If you can tell us in the most concise way about the I am currently affirmations. Yeah. Like or no, the what you just said right now. But yeah, like, clean it up. Okay. So. In my opinion, what people do too often is they have self-talk that says I am and it's something they don't want to be. So they're being an observer of their past, mm -hmm. right? 
I am, first of all, you're not, but you're, they say, I am anxious, I am angry, I am frustrated, I am poor, I am uh, unhappy, I am blah, 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 blah. Oh, ah, there's a blah, blah, blah. Nice. Uh, I it. think that was I the first time today. I think it's it aware. was, I think it was. So they're saying all the I am's of observing past, and they're just recreating their past in, their, in the present and in the future. As opposed to saying things that you want to be, but saying in a way that you are. So... If I was to put you in uh, a year from now, what are you? Mm -hmm. If you had your way to be, if you, you had your dream, I am happy, I am confident, I have the career I always wanted, I have financial freedom, I have a relationship where I enhance my partner and they enhance me, I have um, the car I want, whatever. I have the I am, I have, I like this is the it's present, what it is, but you're saying it now into the future, you're putting that into the universe, and the universe says, you are confident? Okay, you are confident. Let's make you start doing confident things. Uh, tomorrow you'll be jumping out of a plane. Like, <laughs> that's the extreme version of it. Right. But it's like, or, oh, you are calm? You're gonna start doing cold showers. That's what the universe tells you. Or we're gonna put you in the path of learning about uh, meditating, right? And then all of a sudden things are happening. It's like, so interesting how the way that happened. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> It's because that's, the, that's literally the law of the universe, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So that's to me the, of not being observer of the past, choice. Observer of, right now we're living in the moment, right? We're right here. Do I want to be an observer of my past and recreate my past over and over, suffer and die? Or do I want to be the creator of my future and create the life that I really want? Because you're allowed to, just so you know. It's up to you, nobody else. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are doing what? Sitting back waiting. Who's gonna do it for me? Nah, no one's gonna, just so you know. The government ain't doing it for you. I know you think they are, they're not. Your parents aren't doing it, your friends ain't doing it, your partner's not doing it, the dog's not gonna, they're all, the dog's gonna try to alert you to it and try to show you by his behavior, but it's on you. So you can keep looking and looking and looking, but you're never gonna find it when the gold and all the shit, your diamonds you're looking for is right inside there. Mm -hmm. Who taught us that? Ed dog. Wow. That's it. Brought it all the way full circle. Yeah, yeah I'll say. That? Appreciate you guys. I'm good at this shit. I'm great Very at this good. shit, actually. Yeah. I'm not getting good. You're really I'm good. I'm awesome at doing this mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. You're really good, and we're getting you guys really good at it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank awesome. you. Awesome. I, I would right. recommend everybody doing affirmations. Absolutely. Doing them at night. I mean, you can go on YouTube. There's yeah. a ton of Absolutely. different ones. You Just make sure you listen to it before you put them on at night, because it's like, oh. No, that's true, because yeah. it could be something else. Come sketchy shit. Yeah. You have to be aware of what it is that you're listening to. But those are things, too, really quick, is like something you could put on before going to bed or just upon rising. I think we talked about this, yeah. the state of theta. Mm -hmm. It was like right before bed or just waking up, you put that in your head, uh, put that on your ears, and just play that stuff. And that starts like, as, as you're falling asleep or as you're waking up, that's going, bam, right into the subconscious. Mm -hmm. I've been doing uh, frequencies. Uh, and frequencies. For, like, yeah, they're good uh, too. Chakra frequencies Hell for yeah. like a while now, like two months straight. It's the best. Man, it's made a big difference. That's what um, I do for my my breath work yeah. in the morning. I throw mm -hmm. on 432, 528, all these 432 is a really good one. Yeah. Healing frequencies, they call it. I literally put in healing frequency that comes on all this noise, but it's like with some music over mm -hmm, it, mm -hmm. and it's just relaxing as hell. It's like, why does this feel so damn good to hear this stuff? Yeah. I the turn, vibration. I turn, I turn the music on, and it makes me go to sleep. I turn the music off, and I'm right up. Like, yeah. It's yeah. like, what, what is that thing that you said, the, the, the bell relating to? Pavlov. Pavlov yeah. theory. Yeah. Right? Have like the bell. They, they would feed the dog and ring the bell. Feed the dog, ring the bell, and all of a sudden they go ding, and the dog starts drooling. Mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah, that's one where you're literally tapping into that, um, that frequency. And it just feels good because what is, what is uh, a frequency? Like uh, energy is what? A frequency. A frequency is a vibration. Mm -hmm. So we're all vibrating right now as much as we don't realize it. Look, can we talk about vibrate college today? Yeah. Look at that. No sense, but, <laughs> but, you know what I'm saying? But it's, but it's, it's all something trying to real. Tie it into something. Yeah. People always say, like, what is energy? What do you mean by energy? That's not real. It's all kumbaya. Well, you're shit. what? Actually, now that you brought that up. Energy is literally frequency. Yeah. So that's how and you And frequency can... is a vibration, and vibration can be measured. Or vice versa. Mm -hmm. Vibration, the exact order. frequency I think it's, can be measured. It's but energy, it's... which is a vibration, and vibration is a frequency, which can be measured, or whatever yes. it is. One or the other. But that's... I, I so don't know the exact So people point. can ask, what is energy? Energy is a vibration, which is a frequency, yep. which you can measure, and you can actually tune your energy to whatever frequency that you want. You know who talks mm -hmm. about this a lot? Joe Dispenza. I was Joe just going to say that. He's we excellent. don't talk about him enough. No, we don't. So I don't think we've we'll, really ever mentioned we'll him. him yeah, he's great. Sure. He has a lot of good Really good shit. Good so stuff. we'll pull some more stuff about him too. He's excellent. Absolutely. He's all about energy, which is, he talks about all those things. 
I'll actually, I'll bring, I'll, I'll review what he is because I've done a bunch of his courses, so I'll do. You talk uh, about a lot of the stuff, but you've never brought him, never, him on. Yeah, right. yeah. He's like, and this is this is like a, a lot, lot of people don't know about him. Like anyone that I've talked, like my friends, family, they're like, "Who who is this Who's guy?" Who's this guy? I know. I'm like, "How do you not know about I know, him?" I know, I know, because it's like once you see it, you're like, "Holy shit, this makes so much sense." Yeah. But yeah. really, what I'm trying to do is like, and we'll we'll discuss all the people, but again, like I don't just take anybody's word for anything. And what's created me to be this version of myself right now is taking things from people like Caesar from uh, Joe Dispenza, from Tony Robbins, from Jesse, from, um, I mean, there's so many more of the, of the people I can go on and on, but whatever. Dog tra- even dog training people, but all these people, I put them all together. I don't just take their word for it. I actually think about it objectively. I look at it, I try things, I apply it, and whatever's working for me, then I share it with you guys. So I don't just say like, you know, oh look, what you guys need to do is da da da. It's like, well, how do you know that? Did you try hence, any of that? Hence right. the guinea pig. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I and not, it. I mean, and some things that work for you may not work for Wim me Hoff, or vice versa. Way, but you're gonna yeah. try it. Though, of course, as long Wim as you're Hoff's open to one. it. Yeah. Wim Hof's a huge one. one. Yeah, Wim Hof, yeah. Ice Man, amazing yeah. one. I should come up with like a list of like the people that I've yeah, done over the years. Yeah, I think years. for the next podcast we will do that as yeah. an introduction. Let's talk about all of the growth things that we have done as as a group. Yeah. Meditating, like Bob and, Proctor's and then, a great one too for, yeah, Bob for, Proctor. for uh, meditations yeah. and affirmations and one. stuff. He, and if he, you guys have any questions about any of his growth stuff, like yeah. ask too. And his his uh, Bob Proctor had a really good uh, that meditation, that abundance meditation. Yes. You can check that out. Uh, abundance meditation about like all things happening for you. That's like, a really good one. That, it's like, one of my favorites. Me too. It's a really good Literally. one. We I did listened to that. that for a mm-hmm. while, and then like a lot of things happen when that that happens. So yeah, absolutely. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Any questions, hit us up in the comments. We love you guys. Hope you're enjoying the podcast. Give us feedback. Have an awesome day. Stay calm and confident. And we will see you soon. (laughs) Bye. Love you guys. Bye. You didn't have enough today? I had like none. (laughs) I didn't want to vomit.